Hey everyone, today we're here to talk about tournament scheduling and how it affects not only your success in your development as a junior golfer, but also your transition to college golf uh, and the exposure that you're gaining from these tournaments to college coaches, to the rankings, uh, to things like that. So hey, for college golf, when we talk about tournament scheduling, I think it, it's definitely one of the more talked about subjects. Um, it's, it's definitely something that I think overwhelms families and is very daunting to most. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. So what, what I'm here to do is kind of lay out the blueprint for you guys. Uh, and, and I'm just gonna start by talking about the four stages of tournament scheduling. We have to plan, we have to prepare, we have to execute, and then we have to evaluate. So let's talk about those, let's define those, and then we'll break them down a little bit more. So planning, just looking ahead and taking ownership, Right? What I say is ink it, don't just think it. Right? So actually putting a schedule somewhere where it's visible. Preparing, not only preparing your skill set and your body, but making sure you're just mentally prepared for tournaments. Uh, execution, that's actually going out performing and trying to be the best self that you can be. Uh, and then evaluation is reflecting on past performances, not only from a skill set standpoint, but also from a, did I play in the right event? Did I approach this the proper way? And starting to learn through some of those trials and turbulations. Okay, so let's now let's break down each stage. So the planning stage, I think the biggest thing that I see is that families don't start early enough and they don't look often enough. So make it a regular habit, even if it's you know the second Friday of each month, but make it a regular habit to sign up for events and also make sure that you're staying staying ahead and not missing deadlines and, and not letting other events pass you by. Uh, the reality is, is that the AJGA requires you to sign up about six weeks in advance now. And in some cases and in other invitationals, you might even have to sign up sooner than six weeks in advance. And, and as a general rule of thumb, like I said, I think just having some day during the week that you look at schedules that you start to plan, even if it's just to sit down with mom and dad, you know, although I like my juniors to take control and actually hit submit and confirm in, in, in terms of signing themselves up for tournaments, I still think it's good to talk to mom and dad and, and coordinate travel schedules and uh, other siblings and uh, other family events that are going on. Um, in the planning stage, the other thing I wanted to say is it's important to find your balance. Uh, I find a lot of families that they just load the schedule with AJGAs and it might be a player that's barely shooting 76 or 77. Right, and the reality is, is a lot of these AJGAs, especially post pandemic, have required you to be fully exempt to actually play in the event. So unless you have, you know, 30, 35 stars as of, you know, beginning of 2022 here, um, you know, don't overload your schedule on the on the the top heavy side, right? And the way I like to talk about finding the balance is having your majors or your hard events, having your medium events or your challenging events and then having your easy events or your, your, um, your confidence builders, if you will. Um, I have a really good friend named Ben Pelicani that you know, he, he had a really good way to say this. And he said, you know, those, those majors, if you end up winning, people will start saying, who is that guy? I've never heard of him, right? And then your challenging events, if you win, people might say, well, I'm not surprised. He's been there before, like he was due. Right, and then your easy events, those confidence builders, people are probably gonna say, well, he should have won. He's the best player in the field. He's been here before. Um, and just a side note, I think it's, in terms of balancing your schedule, you have to think about the spacing between events. You have to think about not only the priority of events, but the order in which that they're falling. Right, so if we go, if we come out of winter and we go major, 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 Right? and we never get the chance to build our confidence, that might really hurt us, okay? So the way I say it is keep climbing the developmental ladder, right, and know yourself, right? So if you're coming out of winter, make sure that you're playing a couple of those confidence builders, a couple of those challenging events first before you jump right into your majors. And then the same thing goes for setting goals and setting expectations. You know, if, if you haven't even succeeded at the regional level, well then don't set your sights on trying to win and set the expectation to win at the national level, right? So a good goal, for example, might be if your best finish ever is a top five in a state event, right? Your next goal might just be to get in contention, to get into that final group 
and, and feel that pressure and then put yourself in a position to win, right? At the regional level. And then you can eventually transition. Once you get in that final group, once you learn how to win, that's when you can start to transition to more of the national level events and start to put the expectation to actually win an AJGA or win an Invitational, okay? All right, and then the only other thing I have for the planning stage is that if you are coming out of cold weather, give yourself one month. I have the one month rule. Um, you know, one month after your home course reopens, is a, it should be enough time for you to not only train the skills that you need for competition, but also prepare yourself uh, and ready yourself for that next event. Um, preparation stage, let's get into the preparation. Stage number two, keep your schedule visible. I think that's the one thing. If you're saving your schedule on Apple Notes, or you know, if you're, if you're looking at your schedule in a way where you, it doesn't stay visible, um, you know, you're, you're really not taking ownership. So that's one of the biggest things is, you know, put it on your bedroom mirror, put it somewhere, you know, on, on the, the refrigerator at home if you can, or your, or your mirror in your bathroom. Um, put it somewhere where it's going to be visible and you're excited for your next event. Um, this goes without saying, but prepare like a pro. Um, you know, your schedule should determine how you practice and your practice ultimately determines how you perform. So not only is it important, like we just said, to plan, but to keep that schedule really visible so that you know when to practice and what to practice uh, based on what your coach tells you and based on also how much time you have until that next event, right? Your practice one day from an event is gonna look a lot different than when you have a whole month to practice. And it, and it very well should. That's what we call periodization in golf, okay? Um, course prep, in, in preparation stage, I'm a big believer, I'm a big advocate in, in my company here at Four College Golf to use tools and, and resources like Google Earth, Google Maps, um, Pro Visualizer, uh, Blue Golf, there's so many great apps out there. Even, even like stat tracking apps like Arcos that go on the butt end of your clubs, uh, even apps like that have, um, ha have the ability to uh, show you the golf course uh, from a mapping perspective. So my rule of thumb is you know, at least get on and check out the golf course, check out your boundaries, check out some of the specifics of what clubs you'll be hitting into greens and, and specific targets if you can and then play at least one practice round, right? I think the, the saying goes, tour pros play three practice rounds on golf courses that they've already been to, you know, five, 10, 15 times. You know, we, and, and our skill level isn't close to where they're at, then we need to play at least one, right? Throw balls around the greens, uh, check out slopes, ask yourself, where could a tough pin position be here? And if you can, even start to get some of those dots in the practice rounds. All right, the last bullet point I have in the planning stage is keep a growth mindset. Continue growing and adding to that developmental skill set, and you'll only continue, you'll only continue to grow and get better every single day. A good friend of mine, Corey Connor, said, keep adding layers to the onion. Right? I think about that onion as layers of armor, right? The more armor I keep adding, the more I keep practicing day to day to day, the more impenetrable that armor becomes. Okay? So that's, that's our planning stage uh, and our preparation stage. We're gonna move on to the final two stages, which are the execution stage, just readying yourself for tournaments and really being ready to go out and just perform, right? And then the evaluation stage, which is kind of reflecting back and looking at your past performances and looking at those decisions that went into tournament scheduling. All right, when it comes to execution, be you, play to your strengths, know your game plan and stay true to your identity. Be confident when you're out there, guys. I think that's the number one thing I see is like, you know, everybody's confident when they're at their home golf course, but when they show up for a tournament, you know, their head slouches, their, their body language really falters, and uh, you can just tell who's ready to play uh, by, by the way they're walking around the clubhouse, by the way they're presenting themselves, uh, you know, to the tournament staff, um, you know, by the way that they're setting up their drills and going about their business as well. So uh, my biggest advice there is, you know, get to a point where you can play freely and minimize expectations, all, all outside distractions, and as many negative emotions as you can, right? That's how we can really just be in a, in a state of play and be really free. I think that's where our best golf comes from, no matter who you are. Uh, and then just be decisive and stay aggressive. When it comes to going out and performing, um, like I said, I think the guys that know 
how to go about doing their business are the ones that can be decisive and can stay aggressive. So in the planning stage, that's when you have to really smooth everything out. And then when you get to the tournament, just allow that to ooze out of you and perform. All right. Okay. Last but not least, the evaluation stage. Evaluate your past performances. It's key to make these things vocal to your coach. It's key to write them down and take ownership yourself. Like we said, ink it, don't just think it. And then the three questions I always ask my players I wanna share with you guys is, what did you do well? What could you have done better? And how will you do it better next time? I call that good, better, how. Okay, that's a great evaluation technique that you can ask yourself after every round and start journaling on your own and really taking ownership of your evaluation. Uh, the second thing is tracking your stats, right? There's so many good apps out there like Up Game, Shot by Shot, Decade, um, you know, Blue Golf, Birdie Fire. There's even the USGA GIN app has a pretty decent stat tracking system. But make sure that you're disciplined enough to do this after every round. I think that's the big key is that in order to have a decent sample size of data, you're going to need 20, 30, 40 rounds. You can't just look at a, one tournament or a few weeks you really need to look at a, a larger sample size, okay? And then the last thing in the evaluation stage, guys, is that we need to ask ourselves questions about how we should go about scheduling in the future, right? Like we said, this is very cyclical. You're gonna be scheduling new events by the time your last events finish. So I think asking yourself questions like, how will I do things differently in the future? What level of events is appropriate compared to my skill level right now? Right? And that needs to be continuously reassessed. Did I play enough or not often enough? Right? Did I play too much or should I play more often? Uh, I think that's really weather dependent, location and where you are in the country dependent and also skill dependent and age dependent. Did I give myself enough time for rest and recovery? Did I space my events out enough? I think that's a really important one. I see juniors getting really overwhelmed and even burnt out at times because they pack in so many events uh, typically during those summer months. Uh, ask yourself, were there any events that I couldn't handle? I think that's one that you know, kind of just prompted from what I just said, is when we get really stressed out, you know, we, we, we tend to play worse, uh, and we tend to have those moments where you know, we feel anxiety, and, and we all know that that's typically not a good thing for competitive golf. Um, and then just recognize any patterns that you found in your game, and ask yourself, am I playing for experience? and development, or am I playing for more exposure? And when it comes to the recruiting process, there are times, especially during your junior and senior year, that you'll need to play for exposure and play near the campuses where you're trying to get recruited. Um, it goes without saying, we did a study at, at Junior Golf Scoreboard um, just a few days ago, and what we found out is that the top players, the top 250 players in each class, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, the tendency was those underclassmen, those freshmen and sophomores, had a tendency to play more often, but play more locally. And then once, once we looked at the juniors and seniors and that set of data, it was really interesting that we saw that players actually competed less often, but they competed at a higher level and they picked their spots. They were really traveling around the country and making sure that they could also get that exposure to college coaches, the rankings, uh, other levels of competition, other types of golf courses, things like that. So now that you've gone through the tournament scheduling cycle, hopefully that makes sense. Please let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I hope this gives you the ability to assess and modify your tournament schedule going forward. And I wish you guys the best of luck on the recruiting trail and in your tournaments upcoming. Thanks so much. Take care.